Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about vacuum breakers. So if you're selling a home in Minneapolis, you already know what this thing is. If you're planning to sell a house in Minneapolis, you better know what it is. Minneapolis has this program called the Truth and Sale of Housing Evaluation Program, where you basically need to have a mini inspection done on your home before you can even offer it for sale. And it's done by private home inspectors such as myself who are licensed in the city of Minneapolis. Side note, I'm no longer licensed myself. I was licensed for a long time, probably 17 years. And I finally dropped my license because I'm not doing them anymore. But there's still a lot of people in my company who do them. And as one of the things that we do when we come out to do these evaluations is we need to make sure that if you have an outside faucet or a laundry faucet or something like that where you could connect a garden hose, you need to have some type of backflow prevention to prevent potentially contaminated water from flowing back into the household water supply and contaminating it. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the scenarios where this could happen. Just trust me when I say that it's unlikely, but it has happened in many places throughout the country. So these things are required by not just Minneapolis, not just Minnesota, but national plumbing codes. These are required all over the country. Now, most places don't enforce them, but because Minneapolis has this truth and sale of housing program, they take that opportunity to say, hey, look, we're in your house, we know what's going on, put these stupid things on, you need to do it, and if you don't, well, <laughs> you're gonna have a harder time selling your house. We're gonna make it tough for you. So, what is this thing? It's, it's basically a one-way valve. It's called a vacuum breaker. Sometimes people will call it a backflow preventer, and its job is to make sure that water goes this way and not this way. If there is any back pressure, it'll allow water to just kind of leak out the outside and not go back into the plumbing system. That's what a vacuum breaker does. If you need to put these on your outside faucets, it's a piece of cake. All you need to do is go up to the outside faucet, put this thing on there, give it a couple of twists, and you're done. Now, some of these come with a little set screw. Now, I've taken the set screw off of this one. You can see where I, I've taken it out. I actually made another video showing how to remove a set screw if someone has tightened it down and broken it off. That's supposed to make it permanently installed, but I've got a little hack done with a hacksaw where you cut against... Well, you can watch my video. I'm not gonna get into it here, but there is a way to remove them. For that reason, I don't really get picky about whether people have broken the set screw off or not. As long as the vacuum breaker is in place, I'm happy. Now, the one thing I wanna mention though is that not all faucets need external vacuum breakers. If you have a faucet that has a built-in vacuum breaker, you don't need to do anything else. Now, to figure that out, let's take a look at a few of these faucets. This particular one, it's got this little mushroom cap looking thing. This has integral backflow prevention. And I know that because it's got a standard stamped on the top of the head here. It says 1019C. I'll show you a blow up of that. Here's what it looks like. 1019C, that tells me it has built-in backflow prevention. Here's another faucet, and this has this little mushroom cap. This also has built-in backflow prevention. This one has standard 1019A stamped on the side of it. And then here's yet another type. It doesn't have one of those little mushroom caps, but it's got a much thicker stem here. This is much thicker, and if we look on the other side, it's really tough to read, but it says anti-siphon on here, and it also has a standard stamped on the side. It says ASSE 1011. And it tells me this faucet has built-in backflow prevention. So if you have a faucet like that, there's no need for any external vacuum breakers. You're already covered. And one place we occasionally find, one place where we occasionally find people adding these vacuum breakers is at the hose connections for their washing machine, the, the hot and the cold connections. You don't need vacuum breakers there. Now I know it is a garden hose thread connection, but those are only intended for washing machines to connect to, and washing machines don't need any special protection. They already have their, built, their own built-in air gap. So 
that's the lowdown on these devices. And one extra note, uh, these things cost about, I used to say five bucks. I was just at my local hardware store, my local home improvement store, and the price has gone up. They're about seven fifty, eight bucks, something like that. And this one technically does not meet the state plumbing code requirements. The one that meets the code requirements, it's, it's actually a bigger device. It's field testable and it'll probably cost closer to about $20. But I was just at a couple of big box home improvement stores near my home and they didn't sell them. And for that reason, I don't know if it's exactly that reason, but I'll, I will say the city of Minneapolis does not enforce the big fancy ones. They're fine with these cheaper ones that you could find at any home improvement store, any hardware store around your neighborhood. So again, quick and simple project. It should cost you less than $10 per faucet and it's not a big deal to put them on. That's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.